thing I don't like doing is navigating all these dredge barges. All right, I'm getting some follows. I'm getting some serious follows. I'm out here top water. I got monster swirls on this uh, Lunker Hunt double mullet, but it just doesn't want to cast very far. I just got a hookup and I lost them. I'm none other than the stutter step. Well, I just got my first hookup and I lost them. He came right off. So let's see what the story is. Well, I'm having sort of a hard time. You know, I got a cataract in this eye. And I can't see very good out of it. And I think it's bringing down this eye. So, for some reason this morning, my long range vision is really, really bad. I don't know why. I'm not getting any surgery or even a going to, I can't go to a doctor till May 28th. So, but I'm really wondering what is going on with this right eye because I already had a cataract in it and uh, they put a new lens in there for me and all that. So I don't know what's going on, but where I'm sitting is tons of bait. That's what I like to see. All right, I finally got one, and look how big he is. Oh, my God, I got him on the lunker hunt here. Oh, my God, not even, not even close to a keeper, I don't think. The little double mullet lunker hunt. No hesitation, just came up and boop, sucked it up. That's a six-inch lure. 14 and 7 eighths inch. Bait everywhere. I need to come up here and float rig fish. This is an April spot I'm sitting on. An April spot. Me and the traveler Bob came in here and we have messed the trout. Up. I wish I could just mess them up on the top water. Here's what I'm using. I'm using a big old pink Hunt House, which is a Savage Gear, Savage Salt knockoff supercaster, rear weighted. Just wish my eyesight was a lot better. I'm losing. Serious long distance eyesight here. Oh my god, I just got freaking whacked like no tomorrow on this and I and I lost him. I lost him right to the side of the boat. I don't even know what it was. This is the uh, little Weston Roach Lure. Oh my god, first cast. See, that's what I love about trout. <laughs> I'm getting little trout blowing up right all over this thing, over a shell bar here that I'm casting over. You're not going to believe it! Oh my god! See that plug? Right behind the boat, a trout like that came up and poof, 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 poof. he hit it and he swam up to the side of the boat and sat underneath the plug. I almost felt like I had to do the musky circle on him or something. That son of a, I, I'm looking at him right here with polarized glasses and he's like that. He's absolutely like that. Heart stopping. Oh my God, I need to keep, 
I need to keep working it. Here it is, the sun's up and everything. They are, and he came up, busted on this thing three times and missed it. Oh my God, oh my God. See, that's the thing. Y'all may have laughed when I say go big or go home. Yeah, even little trout whack this, but it's gonna draw out, like draw moisture out of wood. It's gonna draw out a monster. And I mean, he whacked it three times. That was anywhere, that was, looked like a 30 inch trout. That's what that looked like. At one point he was right here on the side of the boat. I'm looking down on top of him and his head's this wide. Oh my God, can you imagine? Can you freaking imagine hooking that bastard on this thing? Oh my God. Oh my God. I, I haven't seen a trout that big in a long time. About that far underneath the water. Oh my god, I don't know why he kept busting it and busting it, but just wouldn't get, wouldn't take it, really. Oh my god. That's the difference between the man and the boys, right there, folks. That's the reason I was up at 4 a.m. this morning and in the water at 5 30. It's kind of hard to walk in a lot of current, and we got a lot of current right now. It's hard to walk up against the current. Throw this summer gun right up on the damn bank. That's how that trout hit. Doing cross current just like this. Casting at the bank, taking it over some structure. Walking the dog. I've always loved walking the dog. Oh, now I just had a, I mean, a Jack Curval like that follow up this god dang Missouri. Why aren't they eating it? I mean, they're, they're chasing it, right? Why are these fish not eating it? And the only fish I catch is a 14 incher on a damn six inch lure. Look like to be about a 10 pound jack. There's fish in here. I just can't catch them. I mean, if my boat was moving along like Billy Bass Fisherman, I would have probably never seen that damn giant trout. I mean, he came right up right here. I'll take a giant jack. I might as well tell you about my new rod. This here is an eight foot, an eight foot ugly stick tiger. They call it a downrigger rod. And there's only really one thing that I despise is this right here. It's two piece. I've always thought of two piece rods. They're for LBA. They're LBA rods, land-based angling. But either way, here's a regular tiger that I use for bottom fishing. Now, check it out. The grip up front is a lot shorter, but it's all basically the same. Same uh, ugly tough guides, it's just an eight footer. Why did I get an LBA rod for, for my personal Jetty Wolf use? Because I have restricted castability. But guess what? I've got beautiful shade. So, meaning that I need to really chuck something out there, right? I mean, I can cast a country mile with this thing. But, and I can work a lure really good, it's a medium light. And when I say medium light, I mean medium light. 
This is a medium light. This is a medium light seven footer. But the reason I got it is for that. Big, big time arching parabolic bend of an ugly stick. I'm a tiger guy. I'm all tiger. I personally like this. It doesn't have to have a trigger for me. I put Ryogas on here. I don't need a trigger. And I absolutely love Tiger Rods. Of course, I got the stripers and I've had the catfish. I've had it all. I just really like the Tigers for the sheer fact they got the big HD reel seat. They're got thicker foam. I like them more than my stripers now. I used to really love the stripers, but when it comes to Tigers, being a kind of a budget rod, but they got so many good actions. So I've got a set of these in really stiff. I got a video about that too. I got a video about everything. I just hit 700 and four published YouTube videos. 704. Right here, 705. I literally have a video about almost everything. Now, maybe someday I'll have a video of serious topwater success. But as of this point, I'm just out trying a bunch of lures and I've really settled on a few for this type of fishing, and it's the really long distance casting lure. Here's one. This is a hunt house. It is a knockoff of the Savage Gear, Savage Salt, Needlefish type lure. This one casts like a bullet. I've got them in pink, I got them in brown. I really am liking the long distance casters. I threw some today, very difficult to cast. Even that, that Ricky the Roach that got slammed on its first cast, that thing was wobbly in the air. Meaning that I've got the top and I, I don't have a lot of room to cast. I just need, boom, serious bombers. Of course, that three and a half ounces that really rockets out there. Streamline. And this uh, Yozuri, this is the one that a big jack followed right up to the boat. Didn't get any hits on it. It's a darter. I really got these for throwing right into the jetty rocks this summer for hopefully big jacks. And I didn't want it to super sink. It's a floater and it dives. And if you really crank it, it'll go about six feet. So between these three, when it comes to the top water, these three right here are really something else. There's a lot that just, uh, they're just not long distance casters. Um, and that's what I need. That one right there, that is killer. Can you believe just a white plastic walk the dog attracted that big ass trout? I mean, I mean, you got this one that's even got little gills painted in it and all. This has nothing. And that, that trout busted on this three times. And I threw everything under the, under the sun before I put this on. That's the story right now. Uh, I don't know what else I'm going to do out here today. But I know for a fact I need to get up here float rig fishing. This is... This is the time that I sort of come up this way in the river because I've had huge success in April up this way. And I see some telltale signs that this is where it's gonna be going on probably through Mother's Day at least. So, give me a call if you wanna go. I mean, come on, you couldn't be more comfortable. Float rig fishing up in here, we've caught everything up here, drum, Sheep's head, flounder, trout, reds, jacks. You want to get up here. You want to give me a call before them ladyfish get too bad, that's for sure. Let's just see if I can get a fish. I brought, I brought some frozen pogies and I got some frozen shrimp. 
because the bait shop wasn't open. So that's the reason I didn't I didn't get live shrimp or anything like that. I stopped at the twice as ice place, the machine. I got a bag of ice. So all I got is some dead bait because I wanted to get up here at first light. I should have come over to where I was right here first at first light. Instead, I tried to place an old, old place that I've absolutely crushed the trout uh, when the bait's moving. This spot had 10 times the bait. There's pogies up here. There's pogies up here. There's mullet up here. There's mullet this big. So all this stuff is passing right through the inlet and you don't even know. Cow nose rays, giant jacks, everything is up here. So it's go time. Unfortunately, in society right now, it's not go time, I guess. But give me a call. We got Spanish at the inlet. Rising tide's the best for that. I love turning and burning on a rising tide. So let's just see what other trouble I can get into. All right, here we go. I saw a whole pile of them down there. I said, uh, who let them dogs out? Ugh. Finally, who let them dogs out? That's a stud. I came in here one year, this exact same spot, and they were spawning right in here, and they were thick. I think we burned eight or ten of them in a row a couple of years ago. So there you go. Seven stripe and jetty snapper. Come on. As soon as I anchored up, I hooked one and I lost it. Yes, sir. I would like to even add him on top water. Well, that was it. The one sheep said. Then the current started running like crazy and the boat started going back and forth and I couldn't get on the spot right. So I gave up. I'm gonna clean the fish now. Make them donuts. My old used to be. I wonder how much he weighs. Let's see how much it weighs. Seven pounds, seven pounds on the nose. Gotta do it old school. I'll give this to my mom and dad. Wish I got the other one. I had one hooked up the minute I dropped the shrimp down. And it came off the hook halfway up. Smaller, of course. So, the old saying goes, H-A-R-D means F-I-S-H. At least I got to see one of the biggest trout I've seen in a long time. I was practically staring them right down the barrel of my lure. Alrighty, folks. I think I have some battery power left in the camera and it's about two hours later after cleaning that fish and I'm home and I barely got home because this is just what happened on Squid Bridge. This is what just happened to me when I hit a big bump. The same bump I constantly hit. Yep. There you go. Tire. Bent the fender. Uh... Bearing went, kicked the tire out, it was sideways, jammed in here. I had to pull over, and as I'm pulled over, uh, I'm in this lane, and I have to get in this lane and then get over here onto the shoulder, which is micro small, 
and they do like a hundred miles an hour over this bridge. It goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up again. And I, right on the down part, I made it to the down part. Thanks to everybody who uh, stopped. Jonathan called me from the pilot boat. Um, I saw another guy. He stopped on the other side of the road, asked me if I needed help, who was in like a landscape truck. And even where I take my trailer to get fixed at Randy Wilson's trailer repair, one of his employees stopped and ran down. But what I did is I called the police. And the community service guy or officer came because there's with this kind of traffic coming off that base, they're doing 100 miles an hour. We all know that because they rammed into Dennis's boat, okay, in the morning. So I was over here, and I had to cross to get in two lanes, go up another bridge, and then make a turn in a light, and I had to do it at two miles an hour. I have no earthly idea how damaged this is right now, but, um, so Joe Maintenance just ain't Joe Maintenance. Then I had to rock the trailer back and forth to try to dislodge the tire and it got cut. Somewhere on here, the tire is cut. There's what used to be the bearing hole. There's all the grease and um, somewhere the tire was cut and I couldn't get it unjammed from the uh, underneath the fender because at the same time, I'm sitting on the road and then there's a slight curb right here. And this tire was stuck between the fender and this ramped up curb because I couldn't pull over any closer. I mean, I was, I was gonna get run over. They wouldn't even let me out of my truck. I turned on my flashers. I had uh, white strobes going off the back of the boat. They don't give a shit. You know, people see a disabled vehicle, they should move. I even had a city bus come ripping down the side of my truck while I'm disabled. So I had to pull out the Andrew Demko AD10 and I literally had to go in here and cut the valve stem to uh, let the air out. So yeah, it was a wonderful day. Another wonderful day in the neighborhood. Even Joe Maintenance, I'm Joe Maintenance and it happens to me. I know, I guess, you know, it should be a yearly thing. All the hubs, yearly. And I don't, I think it's been almost two years. So there you go. That's the uh, punishment I get for going out fishing by myself on a non-paying trip. Dad always reminds me, this is what you get when you go out yourself and he's right almost every time I go out by myself something breaks and with no way to pay for it and we'll see I don't know I'm gonna have to have all four bearings done I don't know if that spindle what's wrong with it um, we'll see so, getting ready to run the Suzuki out in the barrel here so, Thanks for watching, but, you know, what's the old saying? If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. Yeah, there you go. I don't know if I showed you all before, but this is what's so nice about this little Merc kicker. I'm just running it because I haven't run it in a little while, which is a good thing. As long as you just run it at idle, you can run water in on the flusher on the side and you can run it. You can't do that with the Suzuki. You're not supposed to do that on this flusher here. On that flusher, you're not supposed to run it. But on this, it says right in the owner's manual, you can do it as long as you just idle it. So I'm just idling it right now and just giving it a little bit of a workout. The old saying is, 
use it or lose it. Because stuff breaks right in the driveway. All right, well, this is a double PBR Friday. Merry PBR to you. All righty, on top of everything else, do you know what really bother, bugs me? Is salty, nasty rods. So, you know what I'm thinking about doing? I'm cleaning my rods with some uh, degreaser here. And what I'm thinking about doing, and I'll, I'll show you, is carrying my rods and my reels separately. That's being anal as hell. What I'm actually thinking about doing is taking my rods fishing, right, and taking my reels fishing in a separate box and only putting reels on rods when I'm out there and when I'm going to use it. Other than that, reels don't stay on rods. I'm really into these tigers. You notice what I'm doing here? I'm not leaning my rods and reels up against the house or the garage and just... That is the worst thing you can ever do. Do you want to drive all that salt into your reels? Is that what you want to do? So you have nothing but trouble later on? Okay, here's what I'm thinking about doing because I'm an anal SOB. I'm thinking about taking my rods. There's my tigers. And then I've got my box here. This box is my super do-all, right? I've had lures in it. I've had everything in it. I've covered it with stickers. And then what I'm thinking about doing is when I go fishing, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to take these rods, these certain rods, and I'm going to take the reels. I'm going to take the box of reels, okay? And that's it. And a reel is only going on a rod if I'm going to use it. I'm not going to just tote rods and reels. Who would think this is a good idea? Put the comment below. Let me know if you think that's being overly anal or keeping what could be $500. I mean, these were when they were brand new. I didn't pay that because I bought them smartly on eBay, and I have a video about that. Uh, these are $500 reels, and these are my favorite rods, tigers. Why not keep them super clean? All right, iFish, look at that, baby. Look at that, Mr. iFish. That's called squeaky clean, brother. That's the way we like it around here at the Jetty Wolf Fish Camp.